Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge, and today we have It Was Always Me. I will not be able to properly pronounce the Spanish version. <laughs> I will try. Oh, I can't. It's not on here. Uh, where is it? Oh, Siempre Fui Lo. Fui yo? Fui yo? I, I didn't. Siempre Fui Lo. Siempre Fui. Fui yo. Uh, fui yo? I don't know. Sorry, Spanish speaking people who I've just butchered your language. Uh, <laughs> this is a, uh, as you can probably guess, a foreign language, foreign language, well, it's a, it's, it's made in Mexico and Colombia. It's a Mexican Colombian story. Uh, it is a series, it's from 2022, so it's fr pretty recent. Um, it's one season so far on Disney Plus. I imagine this existed probably on some other network in, in uh, Colombia, in Mexico, things like that. Um, maybe it was the Disney version of those. I, I'm not sure. It, it's pretty, uh, pretty clean. It's, it's, I don't think it's uh, anything risque as far as I can tell. Uh, it is essentially a teenage soap opera, but with one very, <sighs> I guess she's not a teenager. Maybe she's just a young adult. She's, she looks young. Pretty petite. Her name is Carol Sevilla, and uh, she is uh, she plays uh, what, is, what did I should say she plays Maria, well, well Lupe Guadalupe Maria Guadalupe. Uh, I, I won't say the last name on here. I can't see it. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. She <laughs> she uh, when we first meet her, I don't want to give too much away because there, the, the way the opening episode kind of unfolds. I'm going to have to give some stuff away. But uh, the way the opening episode unfolds is we find her um, in a place uh, that she feels very uncomfortable. And she is about to go on stage to perform music. And you're like, oh, well, that seems like a very Disney-type channel story to tell. Because apparently everybody wants to be a pop star. Everybody wants to be Hannah Montana. This is not Hannah Montana by any means. It's a totally different thing. Hannah Montana is a comedy. This is a drama, two different things. But it seems like there's an, I don't know if there's a generation or, I mean, yeah, yeah, there's people in every generation who want to be pop stars or singers or performers or artists. And that's okay. That's great. Um, but there seems to be a, just a ton of <laughs> media content that features people, especially young women, who just want to be the next Taylor Swift or Bailey Eilish, or um, just anybody, you know, Lady Gaga, you know, you never know. It, it, and there's plenty of people who are talented people, some people not so much, but in this case, Lupe is very talented, we find out later, but there's a reason why, it's in her blood. Uh, she uh, is living her life in Mexico City, and she uh, is just, uh, I, I, she's just going to school, she's living a normal life, uh, when she gets a phone call that tells her that her father has passed away, ding, 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 Disney story, in which there's a loss of a parent. However, this parent does spend an awful lot of time in the first episode. I don't know if this is a thing that'll happen throughout the series. I imagine it does, because it's part of the structure of the show. Uh, there's a lot of flashbacks. Um, in this, we see uh, Lupe getting the news that her father has died. And she goes, he lives in Cartagena, in Colombia. And so she travels quickly to Cartagena. And I hope I'm probably saying that wrong. Cart Cartagena, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I need to get out more. I'm sorry. Um, and she goes to the funeral where she's met with uh, her, her, uh, her stepmom. Not her, she lives, I think she lives with her mom back in Mexico City, but her stepmom, the woman that uh, married her dad, uh, who's always been loving and supporting and so helpful and everything else in her life, uh, is, is uh, there. Um, she's, she's, they're consoling each other. Her brother, who seems a little bit bitter at her coming back and just sort of showing up uh, because, well, dad's dead now, so you feel like you need to be in his life or death or something at that point. The brother's a little bit bitter for whatever reason. And there's an agent and there's an assistant and there's all sorts of different people. The reason why this is uh, interesting is dad is a pop star in his own right. He is, for lack of a better term, he is the king of rock and roll, of, of Colombian pop music. Uh, he is, he's a legend. Uh, fans 
from all over are just weeping in the streets and they're putting flowers and tributes and just it's they're weeping in the streets and his name is El Faron and that is translates to the pharaoh which you could also say is the king so yeah you get the idea he's a big deal in Colombia uh yeah he might maybe he's a big deal all around the world especially to Colombians but you know Spanish speaking people who like that style of music you know like there's an accordion in it. There's nothing wrong with an accordion. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so yeah, you get you get the idea. Uh, he's a big deal, but she doesn't live the life of a rock star's daughter. I'm going to use the term rock star because pop star doesn't really cover it, really. In a sense, this guy is rock star, if not in the music sense. It's just sort of, hey, living loose and free and, and wild. And he's getting older. He's getting fatter. Uh, there's even a sequence in a, f a flashback where he... Uh, gets harassed by his uh, wife about getting get, gaining some weight uh, that we 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 see as Lupe reads his uh, diary. Mm, yeah, so we get a little bit of insight on his life and also through memories that she has when she is uh, remembering some of the last interactions she had with him before he died uh, a number of years ago uh, on just sitting in his beach house when she's staying there for a little bit. Uh, staying in his beach house and she remembers the time he gave her a special gift and uh, and also asked her for a special gift to perform with him on stage. And she has tremendous stage fright. And I'm not going to give it away, but it doesn't go well. Let's just say that. Um, so she has regrets. She is uh, kind of, she's struggling uh, about the loss of her father and what it means for her. And, uh, but at the same time, the, the scenario of his death seems really suspicious. So this isn't just a, a, a there's a romance, it's a family drama. Uh, it's also a, possibly a murder mystery. She believes that there's a chance that there might be foul play. So just as she's about ready to leave to head back to New, back to Mexico City, she decides to stay. And not only that, in order to sort of have a reason to stick around, I guess, I, I don't know, we flash all the way back to the beginning of the episode where she is nervous about to perform. And uh, can she do it? Can she step on stage? And if she does, will she make the cut? It's it's almost like a it's an audition for like I don't know if it's like for an, like an American Idol type show but everything is an American Idol t type show apparently on television or it will be very soon with the writer's strike so we'll be back to American Idol knockoffs for the next year or two so hey give the writers what they want just saying support the WGA anyway uh, one of the most uh, important components of this when I said romance of course is the fact that she runs into a young man named Noah who is mysteriously beardy, and he is sort of just rummaging around his beach house, uh, her dad's beach house. And she's like, who are you? What are you doing in here? And he's like, I'm his assistant. Well, you know, right from the moment that just two attractive people are going to possibly have a blossoming romance, but is he trustworthy? Could he be somebody of s suspicion of the of what she believes is the murder of her father. And who could gain something from the death of her father? Everybody, apparently. I mean, think about it. Superstar dies, who has, uh, who's gonna benefit? Well, maybe his his uh, widow, maybe his son who wants to be a, a star, who could take advantage of that ride, that coattails of that stardom, of the, you know, the biggest man in music in Colombia. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, his agent who just wants to keep making the making the money off of uh, his old partner, but with his son, maybe, maybe it's the assistant. Maybe it's it could be anybody. Maybe Lupe did it, and she was, you know, she was deranged. His multiple personalities. Maybe no, that's not a thing. Actually, <laughs> if it was a telenovela. It would be. It, it could be a possibility. It's This is not a t telenovela. It's, it's, it has a very soapy element to it, but it is not uh, one of those more histrionic, very loud and very just weird, uh, but fun telenovelas that uh, are all the rage in Mexico and uh, around there. So 
Uh, it, it's not the kind of thing that I'm gonna watch any more of. It's it's this the the overdub. It's, it's it is overdub. Just so you know, you can probably change the language. Uh, so that it's the original Spanish language, if you understand Spanish and you want to hear the original voices, uh, but it is very much overdubbed, and I'm surprised at how well it, it is, how, how good it is. Uh, it's well done. Um, usually, when you get these kind of things, uh, depending on how fast the original actors spoke, the English actors have to just sort of cram a ton of dialogue in really quickly in a very flat delivery. It, 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 yeah, it gets really kind of. I don't know, awkward at times. But this, uh, there was a lot of uh, moments that it, it felt natural. It felt like, uh, even though the mouths didn't match the words, it it was not terrible. It was not, it was watchable. So it felt like, you know, these the way these characters would speak. So that, that's, a, that's a plus. Uh, and of course, when it comes to the music, there's obviously music in this uh, throughout. Um, the music is not translated at all. And that's that's fine. That's the way it should be. You should get the original feel of the music. You shouldn't have uh, English speaking actors singing over, you know, singing the songs, remaking the songs. It wouldn't make sense unless you have, because the guy who's singing this stuff isn't really a pop star as far as I know. Maybe he is in Colombia. I don't know. Uh, or Mexico. I, I have no idea. Uh, he's played uh, by Christian Tapan. Noah is played by Pepe Bueno. Pepe Bueno? That sounds dirty. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so yeah, there's. I imagine there's this cast is going to expand. They tend to spend a little time, camera time at the audition on some other other young people who have a band. I don't know if that's. <laughs> they, they might end up being friends and just growing out the cast. I have no idea. It's not the kind of thing I'd recommend to say, oh yeah, this is just something you gotta watch. It, it isn't. But if you're in these kind of soaps, uh, I can't think of, you know, I mean, if you watched all, all the other types of soaps like this, whether Spanish or Korean or whatever, uh, or even the English, American version, there's there's some pretty soapy stuff that we have here. If you've seen all the other ones, and you feel like this is something that you could just sort of curl up in a, under a blanket and just binge watch it all, all the way through, yeah, this might be for you. But yeah, it's not for me. It's, I can't say it's bad at all, but it's just not for me. So let's pick tomorrow's episode and see if it's something that is for me. 26. 26. Low number. Are we in the A's or B's? Come on. No, just don't give me notifications. I don't care. Oh, wow. Speaking of, well, I can't say soapy, but it's a... It's another teenage, coming of age type of iconic Disney Channel star series. We're going to watch at least the first episode of Andy Mack. Yeah. I, even I know who Andy Mack is. I've never watched her. So this will all be brand new, but I know who Andy Mack is. So that's what we're watching next. Andy Mack is next on the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.